Hello, welcome to Wilson's Barbecue. In this video, you're gonna see almost everything that we do in the week leading up to one of our barbecue collection takeaway nights. So I get a lot of questions on how it works, how we do it, how we hold the meat, how we keep the meat hot, where do we buy our sausages from, does everyone turn up to collect their meal at the same time, that kind of thing. So I wanted to do this video because I thought it would be interesting to some people and help answer some of those questions. If there's something that I haven't covered in this video that you want me to cover, then please just drop me a comment below. And this definitely isn't how to run a small barbecue business from home, this is just how I do it. So it's a little bit longer than most of my videos, uh, but obviously there's a lot of prep that goes into one of these nights. So hopefully you stick around, watch the video, enjoy it. Give me a thumbs up if you do. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, it really helps me out and enjoy. So every couple of weeks I will announce on my Instagram that I'm gonna do a barbecue for collection night. Pre-orders open up one week before and to get to it, I have set up a uh, link tree on my Instagram. Uh, just order for collection or go to YouTube. So the week before we actually do the takeaway, I'll update all of the stock on here. As you can see, it's currently sold out. So you can see that I've got all the meats, briskets, beef ribs, sausage, turkey, pulled pork, pork ribs. We do an insulated carry bag if people are maybe traveling. We've got coleslaw, street corn, pit beans, potato salad. Got to have the big red. So people can order as much as they want. They just need to put it into their basket. They check out. When they check out, they select a collection time. And those go in increments of 10 minutes. So we also text the customers in the middle of the week just to remind them of their collection time and provide them with the collection address. The collection address is also on the checkout screen. So it is Tuesday today. We're gonna to make the sausage today. Uh, we're then gonna uh, leave them in the fridge overnight. So they're gonna firm up um, and dry out the skins, create a nice pellicle so we can get lots of smoke on them. Uh, cold smoke them tomorrow for about six seven hours uh, and then we'll vacuum seal them chill them down real quickly in a nice bath so then on saturday service day uh, we'll recook them in the offset pretty simple we've just got some cubed up cheddar jalapenos there right so cubed up all of my brisket trimmings pork fat my brisket fat so now i've just got to weigh this out once i've got my total weight then i can start to use my little board up here which is just a little mag magnet board. Um, once I've weighed it all out, I can start working out my percentages for all of the uh, spices and seasonings that I'm gonna use. So I've just worked out my total weight and then I've got my <clears throat> percentages that I use for uh, this sausage that I make. There's my spice mix. So we've ground our meat, we're just weighing out the right amount of cold water. Here's our spice mix. Some people put this in separately. I like to put it all in here first and make a bit, make a bit of a, a slurry. So that way I know that all of the spices are dissolved and when it goes into here, they'll be evenly distributed. Throw in the cheese. All mixed up, now we're just gonna take them over and stuff them into the casings. Probably gonna get about 40, maybe 45 sausages out of this. So yeah, just gonna keep it going. I've linked up all these sausages and then tomorrow we're gonna cold smoke them. And that's it for tonight, just the sausage bacon. See you tomorrow. Right, so it's Wednesday morning. We are going to cold smoke the sausage on the master built since they've got a real nice red color uh, and then we'll back seal them up and we'll cook them properly on Saturday. So these have been in the fridge all night um, and you can see that they're dried up um, which will help with a form some nice color uh, we've got the master built uh, loaded up with some charcoal some wood chunks in there we've got it set to 150 no 165 fahrenheit and these will just smoke away for about probably about seven hours uh, until these have got a really nice smoke of color and then we'll chill them down loads of smoke flavor loads of color and then they'll be finished off on the offset on Saturday. 
which is there. So at this point, about seven hours later, the sausages are done. We're just going to take them off, put them into an ice bath, just water and ice. And what that'll do is shock the casings, cool them down really quickly um, so we can get them into the fridge as soon as possible. They'll be vacuum sealed before they go into the fridge to keep them nice and fresh and they'll just sit there in the fridge wait until saturday when we recook them so just got back from a little trip to costco uh just got mayonnaise things like that uh, but i just wanted to show you hot holding oven that i have so this oven here this is the thing that really allows this to all happen um so it's basically a warming cabinet um you might if you're in the us you'll probably know the name Alto Sham. Um, this is basically just a cheaper version of an Alto Sham. So what will happen is I'll cook the briskets and beef ribs and pork shoulder um, on Friday. They'll come off at about 1 a.m. in the morning at around 150 Fahrenheit, uh, moisture controlled, and it will basically allow the briskets and the beef ribs and the pork to just rest overnight. So they'll cool down slightly, they'll go in there at about 1 a.m. as I say, and they'll just sit there all night and that allows the collagen to break down even further into gelatin, keep them warm and get a really good product at the end. But it also means that I can then use the smoker to cook more meat the following day or if I wanted to overnight. But this means that I can actually get some sleep. So I've only got the 100 gallon smoker from Smokey at Barbecue and the Franklin Barbecue pit, uh, backyard pit. So I wouldn't be able to cook all of the meat that I sell um, all at the same time, ready to come off at the same time to serve it. So this means that I can cook the day before, hold the meat, and also means that it keeps the meat hot throughout the service period as well. And that just keeps it warm, keeps it moist, and uh, means that everyone gets fresh, hot barbecue. Got the big red, and then this will go into the kitchen uh, on Friday. So still Wednesday evening, we're just going to prep some pink pickled red onions. These go as a complimentary side to every order that goes out the door. They get free pickles and free pickled red onions. So we're just going to cut up the red onion, make a little pickle brine, and these will sit in the fridge until Saturday. Apple cider vinegar, salt, plain white sugar, some boiling water. So these are done, they'll go into the garage for a bit to cool down, then they'll go into the fridge. These will get sliced up on Saturday. Right, so it's Thursday, we are gonna trim briskets, we're gonna trim beef ribs, we're gonna season the briskets, we'll season the beef ribs tomorrow. Uh, need to sharpen my knife quickly. I've got a haircut finally, so I don't have to wear a hat uh, in the video anymore, so let's get the briskets trimmed up. So I'm pretty happy with that. We'll get the next one done and then we will season them up. Second brisket trimmed up. Uh, I've rubbed the first one just using 50-50 uh, salt and pepper. Use a little bit of mustard just to help bind. Just two briskets this weekend. These are gonna go in the fridge on these racks, help the surface dry out and help us get a better bark. So that's the beef ribs done. Um, real nice amount of marbling. So that's pretty much it for tonight. We trimmed the briskets, we seasoned the briskets, we trimmed the beef ribs. Tomorrow about midday, we'll put the briskets on, put the pork shoulders on, put the beef ribs on, um, and then we'll pretty much cook those all day, all night. Hopefully take them off at about 1 a.m., but we'll do that all tomorrow. Right, so it's Friday, the actual exciting day, so I promise this is gonna be a bit more enjoyable, hopefully. Um, so we're gonna cook the briskets, we're gonna cook the beef ribs, we're gonna cook the pork shoulder. We're going to be using the Smoky Oak Barbecue 100 gallon pit. That's the only pit I'm going to be using this week because I've only got two briskets. So we need to light a fire, get that going. Whilst the pit is heating up we will get the beef ribs out, season those, season the pork shoulders and then we'll get them all onto the pit. Beef ribs, pork shoulders, briskets were rubbed yesterday, they're in the fridge still. So I just need to go check on the pit, make sure that the coals are breaking down, uh, establish a nice coal bed, and then once the pit has kind of evened out, we'll get this meat on the smoker. So we've got our briskets, we've got our beef ribs, we've got our pork shoulders, ready to go on. So that's all today's meat on. Uh, we don't really do much else other than just watch the fire for a long, long time, get a chair, get a beer, uh, and just chill. Probably look at it in about four, five hours. So 
so we are about four hours and 25 minutes in let's take a first look pork shoulders are getting some good color on them everything's looking good fat is rendering out nicely looking good five hours in pork shoulder got a real good bark on it fat split calling it a bit early this time these are gonna get wrapped So pork shoulders are wrapped. We're gonna go and get the warming oven. We're gonna bring it in from the garage. We'll get it plugged in, turned on, put some water in there to help the moisture levels. And we'll start getting that warmed up in preparation for the pork shoulders coming off and going in there for the evening. Right, so the pork shoulders are feeling super tender, not too concerned about the internal temperature. Take them off and then wrap them in an extra layer of tinfoil. That's just gonna help with that moisture retention for the rest of the evening. Bearing in mind that these are gonna go into a warmer for the next probably up to 18 hours. Obviously, if we were to put them straight into the warmer, there's a risk that the carryover heat will continue to cook them and they may dry out. So I know that they're perfect now coming off the pit. So I want to allow them to cool down to around about 170, maybe 160. When they get to that temperature, they'll go into the warming oven and they'll sit there all night at around 150 Fahrenheit. But for now, they're just gonna sit up there on top cool down, make sure the carryover stopped, and then we can put them into the warmer and we'll do the exact same with the brisket and the beef ribs. So quick update, it's pretty late, it's about midnight. Um, the beef ribs are off, the pork shoulders off, which you saw earlier. One of the briskets is now off, that was probing tender. There's one more on, I think I've probably got about 40 minutes to go. Uh, my wife's in bed, it's really dark outside as well. So I've just got the flashlight on. But once it's all off and in the warming oven, I'll do a quick update. Right, so the briskets are off. They are gonna go into the warmer. Got briskets at the top, two pork shoulders, beef ribs, and beef ribs at the back. Close that up for tonight. Wilson's sleepy. And that's it for today. It wasn't too bad. It's about quarter to one in the morning. So pretty much where I wanted to be. Obviously the warming oven means that I can go to bed. Uh, without it, I wouldn't be able to do this. When we wake up in the morning, we're doing ribs, we're doing turkey, we're doing sausage, and we're prepping all the sides. So I'll see you in the morning. So it's about six in the morning. We're gonna get the fire going again. We're gonna trim some ribs, trim some turkey, season them, get them on the smoker. Oven's been holding steady all night. So I've trimmed the skin off the turkey breast. So now I'm just putting on a fairly heavy rub of pretty much pepper, salt, and paprika. So we've got turkey, we've got ribs come back in about six hours. So ribs are on, turkey's on, fire's running steady. Now we're just prepping sides, prepping the potato salad. Then once we've made that, we'll get on to making the coleslaw. We need to make the street corn and warm through the pit beans. He's been in the fridge since Tuesday, Wednesday, something like that. Uh, they're tasting pretty good, so we're just gonna pop them up. Uh, as well as the pickles. We'll get all these portioned up and they'll go into the fridge ready for service. Potatoes are on. The turkey breasts are just getting wrapped. They've got a good colour on them. Wrap them with some butter and I'll go back on the pit until they hit 155, 160. Homemade sauce all potted up, ready to go. Onto the coleslaw. So we just temped the turkey. They're at 165, um, just shy over. So take them off, take them inside, let them cool down a bit, and they'll go into the warmer. Just get a little look at the ribs. We're about four and a half hours in. looking 
good. Not quite there yet. Just give them a bit of a rotation. Right, so just a quick update as to where we are. The turkey's off, the ribs are nearly done. We've prepped and potted up the coleslaw potato salad. The street corn uh, is on the stove right now. Secret recipe. The pit beans are just uh, warming through. It's about midday right now. Our first collection is at 4.30. Uh, we'll get a text when they get here, so that's when we'll know that they're outside. Uh, so we're just going to watch the ribs, we'll glaze the ribs just before they finish. We'll take them off, they'll go into the warmer with all the rest of the meat which is in there now. And then it'll be time to get that sausage on that I made on Tuesday. So these ribs are looking pretty good, but I think we're going to wrap them. Right, so the ribs are off. So these are just drying out a little bit, getting a bit of tack. They've had a sweet glaze. They're gonna get wrapped up now and put in the warming oven. Ribs are in at the bottom. We're gonna unpack these, put them in there, take them out and get them on the pit. They're already cooked, so they're already safe temperature. So we'll get them cooked now, take them off, put them in the warmer, and then that is all of the meat done. That's pretty much all of the sides done. And then we're just gonna clean up, turn the kitchen around and get it ready for service. So the sausages are looking pretty good. Uh, I think they've probably got about another 20 minutes or so on them. Uh, I'm gonna have to sacrifice one with the thermopen and split the casing, uh, but we'll probably just leave that ourselves. We've always got to do one just to make sure that they're fully cooked and fully reheated all the way through. So we'll check on those in about 10 minutes, get them into the warmer, and then we should be pretty much ready to go. So in the middle of the week, we sent out pickup instructions to everyone. So it just reminded them of their collection time and it provided them with our address. So we sent that, I think, on Wednesday. Today, we're just sending a further reminder, which basically just reminds them of their collection time and it will bring our message to the top of their inbox, their iMessage inbox. So when they arrive, we've asked them to provide us with their car, color and license plate. Uh, and it just means that when they do arrive here, they don't need to go searching for our message. It should be at the top of their inbox and they can just provide us with the car details. That will let us know that they've arrived and we'll go out and provide them with their food. Right, so sausages are off. They are in here. Some of the casings split, uh, which is a bit disappointing. I was maybe running a little bit too hot towards the end, just trying to get them done. Um, but most of them were fine. So that's pretty much it now. These are gonna go into the warming oven. That is everything. So we've got one brisket, one rack of beef ribs, same at the back. We've got two turkey breasts, two pork shoulders, uh, all our sausage, one rack of ribs there, and then the rest are at the back and they'll just feed through. And that is closed now until we do our first order. We've got all of our potato salad, all our coleslaw, we've got our pink pickled red onions, pickles, border sheet, some of the beer koozie, which is kind of cool. So now it's just a time where I'll go have a shower, freshen up a little bit because I smell like smoke. We'll turn the kitchen round from a kind of prep to a service area, uh, just so it's nice and clean, disinfect everything, and then we'll be pretty much ready to go. Also, just because I know what YouTube people are like, commenters, they'll be concerned about coronavirus. Uh, we haven't really worn masks uh, when we're uh, preparing food or cooking food um, so our kind of policy is that when we're preparing food when before we've cooked it um, we don't wear masks otherwise we'd be wearing masks all week um, and the guidance online is that it's unlikely that the uh, coronavirus will kind of transmit through cooked food or um, packaging uh, we also have our home testing kits so uh, we tested ourselves yesterday and we were both negative uh, my wife's actually had a vaccine as well but when it comes to actually serving customers <clears throat> because we're gonna have to go out to the car um, we, we wear masks when I'm slicing meat and prepping all the food we wear masks when we're dealing with either fully cooked food um, after it's been in the warming oven when we're taking things out of the fridge uh, pre-packaged um, sides we wear masks, uh, social distance, all that kind of stuff. But 
tested, we came up negative, which is good. It makes us feel a little bit more confident and hopefully customers as well. Right, I'm gonna jump in the shower. Right, so just to explain how all this works, you'll see it when we actually do our first order anyway, um, but this is a setup. So we've got uh, my cutting area, we've got my dedicated meat chopping, uh, chopping board. So I only ever use this for uh, cutting cooked, prepared, smoked meats. I've got my knife, got my uh, bench scraper to pick them up, weighing scales. So what I'll do is I'll look up here. Uh, these are all my orders. I'm backing up just because it's got people's names on there. Um, so that's got their name, their time, and what they've ordered. Um, I will grab them a tray and just set it here. Uh, I'll then come to the cabinet. I'll take out, eat one tray at a time. I'll bring it over here. I'll set it down. I'll cut the meat, put it into the tray, and then Sam, my wife, will do any hot beans and street corn. Uh, she'll then prepare the street corn here because it has a uh, cheese topping and Valentina's hot sauce drizzle. So she'll do that. She'll then get any cold sides out the fridge, which is just there. She'll put it all into the bags, which are all prepared, ready to go. So we'll have a hot bag and a cold bag. Each customer will get pickles and pickled red onions. We'll receive a text from them to say that they're outside and she'll just go out that door and give it to them. And there's loads of parking out the front as well. So that's pretty much our setup. Uh, you'll see it in action in a bit. Right, so we're five minutes away from our first collection. So we're gonna put their order together. We've got their order up here, so I just need to get all the meat together. So we've got our box of barbecue, we've got our two hot sides, uh, cold sides. Thanks very much! Right, so that is it. We have served absolutely everyone. Everyone got their orders hot and on time. Uh, nothing missing, all the good things that you'd uh, kind of want from one of these takeaway nights. So the kitchen is looking absolutely carnage at the moment. The mess is unreal. Um, so that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, really hope you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment below if there's things that I missed. Uh, let me know anything else that you would want to know that I haven't covered. Head over to my Instagram and give me a follow, really help me out. And thanks again for watching. I hope this was useful and I'll see you in a couple of weeks for another video.